Yeah, so congratulations to Vladimir Putin for winning his election. What did everybody get? Was it 87% in the end? Some, so, something along those lines? Or Are we congratulating him on winning? Well, you say that, but... I mean, I mean, I kind of think we kind of have to, because didn't he kill one of his political opponents? Sorry, kill. Well, I, One I, of them we, died. We, yeah, but I mean, a lot of people are dying suddenly these days. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, don't, I don't really know what to make of that. So look, I, I, so I, I'm, I'm going to... I'm not going to give him the benefit of the doubt, <laughs> if that's what you're asking. I, I, I'm going to vary slightly here, because I don't doubt that he has put his thumb on the scale... What, by Once or twice yeah. along the way in order to get to the election. But the point that I think is more interesting for me is that, yeah, but we do that too. What, murder people in jail? Well, no, I mean, we, we've got Julian Assange who we're just sort of leaving to rot and then you've got various other figures who have been inconvenient. I'm not, saying, we, turned up I'm not saying we're angels. Yes. No, let me come back. But I mean, just, 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 just a more point of putting the thumb on the scale. I think Google filtered out something like 80% of um, Republican fundraising emails. They, they erroneously marked them as spam. So, yeah, I am certain that Putin <coughs> put his thumb on the scales once or twice. I just wanted to highlight that it's not wildly different from our system, even though it is being presented different. I think there might be a slight difference in kind. It's one thing having your fundraising email filtered, and it's another thing being stabbed. It's a, it's a different of extent. I mean, with, with Putin, mm. it's, you know what you're doing with him. It's, it's yes. honest, it's clear. Uh, if you are <laughs> disloyal to Putin, then you die. Yes. And that's, that's a black and white thing. I almost respect that. I almost yes. like knowing where I am in a, in a, in a, in a society like that. If you say something against the leader, you're you're out. Yeah. Whereas it's much more subtle with us. It's much yeah. more, it's it's people who are dissidents being stopped at the border and intimidated by MI5. It's people who are dissidents being demonetized. It, mm. It's a sort of girlish version, a subtle version mm. of mm. what he does. Where you don't quite know where you are, so you have to be careful what you say. There's certain words that will get you in trouble. That will mean that you certain comments like Lee Anderson, for example, yeah. that if you if you just slightly one word out of turn, then that's it. You have to apologize and debase yourself. Um, but you don't quite know the border, and so therefore it's in your interest to just shut up. Well, there wasn't anything fundamentally different that Lee Anderson said from what uh, Suella Braveman said, but there was some sort of difference about Lee Anderson and Suella Braveman. There was a difference Braveman. in how well yes. it was articulated. So she's more educated, whatever, more intelligent, I guess. Is that it? And I've been to Barrister, whatever, she's been to Oxford. Right. And so she, she's, she's able to put it in a slightly less offensive way. Mm. He puts it in a more blunt way. Also, he doesn't have the certain get-out-of-jail-free card that she has. I think the problem with Lee Anderson was specificity. He said it was London and Sadiq Khan who was friends with the Islamists, whereas yeah, uh, Suella Braven said Britain had been captured non-specifically. Yeah. Sorry for the interruption. I'm Father Calvin Robinson, and you can watch my Common Sense Crusade at 3 p.m. on Thursdays, only on lotuseaters.com, where you can sign up for as little as £5 per month. Deus fault. But I wanted to highlight this article from the BBC, who are who, who are predictably dunking on it and um, basically making out the argument that look, that that place is 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 a tyranny, and we have a hallowed democracy, and therefore you know it, it is fundamentally different. Because from the BBC's point of view, Putin winning eighty seven percent is is clearly um, a tyranny, whereas Rishi Sunak running unopposed. Is that well? That's that's our democracy, isn't it? Yes. There, there is a fundamental difference there. So let, let me let me just read from the article and um, you know ju jump in, guys, where you do. But uh, it starts off as predictions go. A Putin landslide was the easy one. No crystal ball or tea leaves required there. After all, in Russia, the Kremlin tightly controls the political system, including the elections. Well, unlike at, here. As, as I've just pointed out, Rishi won unopposed after being parachuted into the safest Tory seat in the country, rapidly promoted, and he, he, he then operated two coups to get rid of two prime ministers and was then shoved in unopposed by backroom deals. There is something Putin-esque. I hadn't thought of this before. There yeah. is something, not just the height problem, but there is something Putin-esque. <laughs> About about our prime minister, isn't there? He is, I, you're right. He was yes. very very safe seat that he has absolutely no connections mm. to whatsoever. But yeah. the attitude of the Conservative Party at the time was be desperately more ethnic minorities or whatever. So yes. presumably he was by, he, there was a, a thumb was put on the scale as it were to bypass yes. the concerns of the people of Richmond and Yorkshire. Well, he certainly was. I mean, Cameron came out and said we did something about the fact that we were straight white men. We made the party more diverse and Sunak. But he, he came out of nowhere and then he's the yeah. prime minister. It's very well, similar it was, with yeah, Macron. He was, chief, he was chief secretary to the treasury. 
and yes. and 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 then it was the the resignation, wasn't it, of the chancellor mm -hmm. and and that uh, whoever that was at the time, I forget the bald chap. Yeah, the bald fellow, the bald, uh, the, the, the yes, oh ja Jabid. Yes, Jabid. oh Jabid. That's yeah. Yes. And and then, and so then and then he's then, yes. he's then he's chancellor, and then he he's moved yeah. up with incredible speed. Inexperienced. Well, well, he, was, he was exactly the same as Macron. Came out of nowhere, shot through the ranks, utterly fast, and then he's in power. Were uh, they both Goldman Sachs bankers? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, so he's, it's the it is there is something Putinesque about it. Young guy, uh, br br brought up by yes. a over overweight, uh, uh, charismatic fellow, yeah. um, who uh, and he then he then takes over, mm. and the overweight charismatic fellow is is like, mm, yeah, there are parallels. Let, let me just yeah, read that it? last line again. After all, in Russia, the Kremlin tightly controls the political system, including elections. Can we just go to the next link? Right, so. I, I thought it might just be remind, worth reminding us that in the US, um, Joe Biden was elected after probably one of the most, well, presumably Houston the most intense election? PSYOP in history. Um, and, and, and because I'm a betting man, I, I was watching this on the night mm. um, with, with a little bet that I put on. And um, basically, uh, the, the, the betting markets were saying that, that Trump is five times more likely to win. Yeah. At, this was 3.30 a.m. than Biden. And then there was a leak or something. How much did you lose? A bit. I, I did take some off the table, but I didn't take it. But the thing is, I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to get a beach house for this. So, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You, you, you betted that, that Trump would win. Why yes. wouldn't you? Well, because obviously they're going to cheat. Well, all well, the, all yes. the signs were... <laughs> they forgot to the first time. Well, no, they were, yes. they were, they were outwitted. There, there, there was this, the, the, yes. these, these campaigning methods and whatever to individually uh, target people and so forth yes. using various algorithms whatever, that, that they just didn't know about. They weren't clever enough. That, so they probably did cheat. They always cheat. Oh, but yes. They, we know they cheated in 1960, for goodness sake, and they probably have always cheated. But they, they, oh, didn't they, they always cheat. Enough. It's whether the cheating gets over the line. It's whether the cheating gets over the yes. line. It's whether they cheated enough. Yeah. And this time they were going to make absolutely sure. Yes. So, so look, I, 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 just, I just want to look at that line with the bit that the, the, the Kremlin tightly controls a Elections and then and then and then glance back at that. The other thing I'd point out, of course, is um, you know after after his surprise win, the FBI director who was um, the, the FBI director of um, was it Wisconsin, whichever one it was, the one with oh. Gretchen Whitmore. So the FBI cooked up a um, Gretchen Whitmore entrapment a scheme, a kidnapping scheme. Yeah. Yes, but before, but interestingly, before it was a kidnapping scheme, it was supposed to be a raid on the state capital. Oh. That guy, after he gets found out and the FBI gets chewed out for entrapment, he then gets moved to the DC office. Six weeks later, wouldn't you know it, they have a, they have a storming of the Capitol, which basically justifies the, uh, the jailing of hundreds of political opponents. Yeah, and he's in charge of the security at the time, isn't he? Uh, yeah. He was. He 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 was, and um, you know that that has been used to give themselves all all sorts of power. So. Um, yeah, I not, just think you knew it was the freest and fairest election when they had to put up barbed wire fences around the White House after the election. That just indicates everything right. uh, that you need to know. Right. So, so let me read another uh, line from this. Chances are that President Putin will continue along his current path of conflict abroad and crackdown at home. So, again, comparing that to the UK, boys talk about flew out. Scottish hate crime think, legislation yeah, that's coming in. The end of my Apparently, oh, sorry, am I preempting this? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you, you cracking you, down of dissidents at home. Well, literally yes. in your home. Yes. You'll be cracking down in your home. Literal dissidents yeah. in your home. Your <laughs> yeah. dad. Yeah. Your 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 yes. your elderly granddad yeah. sitting there saying, "Oh, I don't like all these immigrants coming over here." And then that's it. Ring the police. At least Putin's waiting until yes. you go on holiday to Salisbury. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be to be to be ultra clear for the viewers. Uh, especially the non-regular viewers, because they're the ones who always get tripped on this. I'm not making the argument that Putin is a good guy. No, I'm making good. the argument that Putin is a bad guy. I'm just also making the argument that we're also ruled by bad guys. It's just the midwits seem to think that it's a yeah. good guy, bad guy dichotomy, and it's not. Our bad guys are covered in our colours, and therefore they're good guys according to the midwit. Yes. And actually, my, my slightly, I don't know what you think about this, but my slightly unpopular opinion on this is that, that vote, yes, thumbs on scale, but it's yeah. probably a broadly accurate picture. I would think so. The, yes. well, the impression I get from Russians that I, I yes. know is, uh, and Russians that are there, yes. uh, is that 
it, the one way you will unite a people mm. is by making those people feel utterly persecuted by outsiders. Mm. That this creates yeah. an internal dynamic uh, where you 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 all feel a sense of togetherness, almost like a blitz spirit, mm -hmm. um, which you wouldn't otherwise have felt. So what we've done by putting these economic sanctions on Russia, by making life difficult for the average, because it's the average Russian citizen that's affected by it, it's not billionaires. Uh, what we've done by this is created a sense of, yeah, everyone hates us, everyone hates us, and so and the Americans can't stop saying that. Uh, yeah, and yeah. so yeah, so we we will we will vote for this this uh, this leader. But, but who, is, is, he has made the economy somewhat better compared to. Yeah. Well, you say so, you say somewhat better. It's overtaken Germany. <laughs> well, I was I was I was I believe I was engaging in. in I didn't know that. I believe I was I believe <laughs> yes. I was engaging in in Lytote. There. Yes, <laughs> but but you've got that golden mix of the perception of being well, the, the uh, probably the correct perception of being persecuted by the outside world, mm. but not actually suffering it because their economy so so they've overtaken germany mm. inward investment is a, is at a record high there's a lot of money coming from the eurasian bloc and um the the, the emirate states and, and so on so there's a lot of money flowing into so russia is, is sort of genuinely booming at the moment but coupled with your persecution overall narrative yeah you know, how does that not win you an election? It wins you an election. I mean, it's the most basic thing that you do. If you're yes. particularly if you're if you're unpopular, if your popularity is <clears> on the <throat> wane, which it 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 was to some extent with Putin, then what you have to do is do something nationalistic and, mm. and gung ho to unite the people. It's what Mrs. Thatcher did, and it meant that she won the 1983 election overwhelmingly. Okay, I would agree. Fair enough. Outrageous they invaded the Falklands, but fine. It was a it was brilliant for her because she was oh, in yeah. trouble in the polls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was in trouble. It's what Mugabe did um, in the late in the late nineties. He thought, "How could, I'm losing popularity? What can I do? I know I'll persecute the white farmers. I'll go on and on about how our country is ruled by whites. How terrible it is, mm -hmm. and it will unite us." So is this Rishi Sunak's second term you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you you are raising some really good points actually, because at the end of the day, Putin has, whether you like him or not, performed a very effective judo flip on the mm. United States. Because, uh, of course, when you lay everything out on paper, the, the, the scales are not even between Russia and America. And yet, Putin seems to have played an absolute blinder. He has actually taken territory for Russia. He has actually expanded their borders. Mm. And he has actually shored up their position to the point now where we can't touch them unless we were going to have a full-on invasion. Well, and, and, and the US has, has weakened its, <coughs> it's weakened its geopolitical Europe. position it's with the dollar. It's, it's, it's weakened itself on a military basis because a large part of US hegemony, hegemony is that it, can, that it can police the seas, that it can interdict shipping going from Russia to you know, Brazil. Um, but what you can't interdict is freight trains going between Russia and China. Yeah, you know, so they, they've weakened their 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 political standing, they've weakened their economic standing, and they've weakened their geopolitical. Also, strength. in terms of economic standing, what ultimately I suppose Russia and China would want to do is is bring about a situation where the dollar is no longer yeah. the the currency yes. of, of international trade. And what, if you have fiat currency, which they do, and this mass inflation, these other countries are piling up gold. Mm. I mean, places like Kyrgyzstan have more gold than we do. Oh, it's totally true. They're piling it up and they're doing that because there is, I think, an, a dim awareness that we are at that time of change yeah. where, where the, the dominant mm. group in the world will no longer be the Americans. Well, and, and, and coming back to your Russian friends, l let me know what you think about this because I, I think this might be true, but I don't know enough Russians to sort of properly check it out. I don't think Russians think about politics in the way that we think about it, which is the ding-dong between left and right. I think they just look at their political leader and they apply the following test. Is he um, weak and incompetent or competent and strong? This is pretty... I mean, I interviewed a while ago Alexander Dugin. Oh, right. And um, he made this precise point. He said, you must, un he okay. said, basically, you must understand that the Russian mind is different from the Western mind. And you are interested in all of these things like uh, uh, democracy and uh, individual rights, and liberty, and all this decadent stuff, as from his perspective. Uh, and we, we, are we want to be led. We, 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 it's almost like we want to outsource dealing with our problems to a big man. To a, to a leader who will do that for us. Yeah. And, we, and we much prefer to be wealthy and, to, and, and for our country to be respected, right? like a group level mentality, our country to be something important um, than to have all these individual liberties and yes. whatever. That, and that, so it's a very different way of seeing Psychologically, the world. that must be healthy for a nation. Because what we get is, is we get young women in their 20s who think that it is their concern to solve big political issues of the day, right? And, and in Russia, it's just, if, if what you're saying in, in Russia, I'm sure it is right, is, okay, well, I'm going to get on with the things that I can actually do something about, and mm -hmm. somebody else is going to take care of the political stuff. Mm -hmm. 
well, you're, you're probably going to have lower instances of crazy young women. Well, I think that, that's true. But oh, I, I suppose one way of understanding, this is a point Jordan Peterson made once, actually, one way of understanding getting involved in these big political projects is you do that precisely because you have unresolved mental issues, basically. You see, you, you're crazy. Mm. You are a crazy young woman. You're high in social anxiety. You're high in neuroticism. You've got sort of, I don't know, borderline personality or something, you deal with it by saying to yourself, oh, I'm morally superior, I'm important, I'm fighting for the good of the world, whatever. Right. And that's how you cope with your negative feelings. Well, 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 maybe they're going to be crazy anyway, but it's dangerous for me when they concern themselves with the political sphere. I would rather they just did something genuinely crazy, what were on the plant pot on their head or whatever, I don't know. Just to uh, bring it back to Putin uh, for a moment, Yes, uh, I think another, another advantage he has over almost every single Western leader mm. Is he actually seems to be acting in the interests of Russia? Yes. What a what a thought. Now, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I realise that sounds preposterous <laughs> to Westerners, um, but he's he's obviously not controlled by someone else. But he doesn't seem leaders. to hate Russians. Yeah, no, the way that our leaders do. He seems to like Russia. And yes, Russians, and doesn't seem to be the puppet of someone else. Yes. So. Whether you like him or not, at least he seems to be the guy calling the yeah, shots. Yeah, I mean, if, if I were Russian, I think I'd like him. I'm not Russian, and therefore I, I, it's not my concern. Sure. But I can see why Russians like him. I wouldn't mind someone, maybe a giant orange ego, who might govern him <laughs> yes. basically the same way. Yes. Likes his country, likes the West, likes... If, if, the if only there was someone waiting in the wings in this country who, yeah. who could feel that. I'll, I'll read another line from the article. Chances are that President Putin will continue along his current path of conflict abroad and crack down at home. So, um, well, conflict abroad, I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, as, as, as we mentioned, um, you know, any attempt at peace in Ukraine has been thwarted on the Western side. But, but Boris the, Johnson. But, but the... Um, the um, oh, and, and, and I, I suppose the other point on conflict abroad... Does the US have anything to do with the conflict in the Middle East right now? I mean, two of them, basically. Probably. So, so, so there, there's that. Um, and crack down at home. Um, look, we, we're getting people <coughs> in the UK who are regularly getting jailed and arrested for yeah. speech. And the speech policing is only going to get worse. So Yes. So um, there's that. And, and of course, in the US... Um, we have had hundreds of people jailed. I read in the paper there's a woman that's being uh, a barrister or something that's being sued uh, yeah. for saying that only women menstruate. Really? It's in the newspapers today. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's deeply offended some transsexuals mm. and therefore she's being sued. Wow. Godspeed justice yes. will be delivered. Well, so that, you can't, yes. we have them, it's, it's the anarcho tyranny idea that they don't, yes. they don't investigate actual crime, burglary or whatever, or any, any, anything like that, because they perceive that as, oh, it's not the fault of the burglar, it's, no. it's because of society. It's, it's a form of social justice. It's a form of yeah. social justice. He, he's just retaking what's been taken from him. Um, and so, therefore, you end, up with, you end up with anarchy on the, on the streets, uh, but they heavily police what anyone thinks. Uh, so that they can't actually stand up against this anarchy. And this creates the, the anarchy a kind of tyranny. Too. And it also yeah. means that... I was the other day with um, a, a friend of mine, and he said, he said to, oh, did I lock the door? And he went back, oh, yeah, I locked the door. Right. So you've, you've got to think about these things. You've got to, you, yes. as, as, as there's more and more crime, there's less and less space to think and to do, create and to indeed to have the time to think about opposing your government. Because there's far too much to do. You've got to think about locking this and having a having a big. Uh, well, you're, you're moving cover down on this. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You're moving down Maslow's precisely. You're moving down Maslow's yes. hierarchy of needs to 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 a, to, a, to a more a more basic life where you have to be concerned with just, you know, just getting food ultimately, mm. uh, and that's what it's doing. It's moving us down Maslow's hierarchy of needs, so we just don't have the space and the time to think about greater yes. things like politics because we're just about surviving. Well, the BBC continues, as for Russian civil <laughs> society, that's already under intense pressure may well intensify. So apparently Russian civil society is under intense pressure. But yet on this show, we, we give daily examples of how the US, UK, Canada, Australia and Ireland are basically at breaking point. Yeah. Well, when you say civil society... Well, they, they say that. I, I think of that in terms of the sort of middle class, sort of mm. civic, you know, this, this sort of... It doesn't have to be middle class. Well, well you know what I mean. This I know. Civic you. burger yes. values that yeah. where you have the clubs and you, you know, the gardening society, the local history group, all this kind of stuff. Um, and my understanding is that that's never that's another difference between Russia and the West. That's never been particularly substantial in Russia, no. Um, no. not even under the Tsar. And now part of that, I suppose, is because you, you have a dictatorship where everything was related to the Communist Party and to the party, and so that you couldn't really have independent organizations of any kind. Yeah. But even since the breakdown of that, this has these independent civil society organizations. They have arisen elsewhere in Eastern Europe that was under communism. 
Poland or whatever. There's loads of civil society stuff. There's not much of that in Russia. There's not much civil society. That's a big difference. Mm. The, the, the article even highlights a, um, a tweet from David Cameron. Uh, apparently he said, oh, uh, in fact, let, let's just call it up. Um, so, so David Cameron says, polls are closed in Russia following the illegal holding of elections on Ukrainian territory. Blah, 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 blah. This is not what free and fair elections look like. How so, would you know, Mr. Cameron? Lord Cameron? Yes. Our unelected foreign minister serving yeah. a man who was appointed... Uh, unelected. After, un, who was unelected, appointed without um, contest after two yeah. prime ministers were cooed out. Yeah. I, d I don't actually feel like taking a lecture on democracy from the no, current... No, quite. quite. Fact, none of the people who rule the United Kingdom have been elected to their position. Apart uh, from Sidi Khan. You mean, in the, right. you, you mean in the sense of winning an election? Yeah. I mean, if that's required. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so the Welsh guy has been replaced yeah. in an election. Rishi obviously doesn't so do elections. So did Hamza Yusuf when... Yes, Hamza Yusuf, yes. And, um, yeah. So none of the, the, the main constituent places in the... Yes. No, but that's not that's not our system. Our system is you vote, you vote for a party, and the part well, not even that though, is it? It's our system is you vote for a candidate in a small area. Yeah, that's the, at least that's the yeah. Westminster system. That's your, yeah. that, it, and, and that. I mean, we didn't even have sure, the we didn't a, have the names of the of the political parties on the ballot paper until I think eighty seven. Sure, but there, there's always the sort of sense that there is the leader of the party, and there's something. So, so the way the way I've come to think about it is, when you go and vote for your local candidate, that is the person you are surrendering your sovereignty to, hmm. effectively. Um, another an, another line from this. Um, so um, the article goes on. Crucially, he, he he can now claim to have a mandate for his war in Ukraine in the direction which he's leading Russia. In the end, it was the Kremlin leader who came out, came out on top two months after the mutiny. Prigozhin was dead, killed in a plane crash. So. Before I talk about Prigozhin, I, I'd, I'd just like to briefly give a shout out to Dr. David Kelly, Julian Assange, the Boeing whistleblower from about a week ago, um, Seth Rich. I think, have we got a picture of um, Seth Rich? Oh, no, I've, I, I've actually got this entire list of Clinton associates who have mysteriously died after they've the other He's currently in uh, Snowden, Edward Snowden. Snowden, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Now, to be fair... Um, Seth Rich and Dr. David Kelly and Julian Assange and the whistleblower, yeah. none of them actually drove a column of tanks towards Washington, D.C. Don't see them complaining about insurrections. About yes. Either. Well, the th thing is, in any system, if you drive a column of tanks towards your capital, I kind of expect you to turn up dead. If you don't win, yeah. Yes. But That's what I don't understand about Prigozhin. Why did he, he must have known that he'd he seriously crossed a line. Yes. If you cross a line, but very seriously, yeah. you don't you, stop in a halfway, fairly major do you? way. Yeah. You don't. You don't stop halfway. You you do this or you die. I, I I kind of assume he must have been. He must have had a psychological break, being under intense pressure or something like that. But my my point is more not not to so much to discuss the Russian system. It's just can you imagine how how the U.S. political system would react if Seb Gorka drove a column of tanks towards D.C. Well, I'm saying, Doctor Gorka. I mean, so would, I'm not going to disavow. Would, would would they just shrug it off and just say, "Oh, it's all part and parcel of the banter of politics"? Or probably not. I imagine there'd be a punishment involved. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so there is that. Um, the article goes on. Um, there is the one more thing about the 87. percent It's a great confidence boost when you're president and you told you won another landslide. It makes you feel even more powerful, invincible, even. Um, he is now the longest-serving Russian leader since Catherine the Great. So, so just a quick note on who he's outlived. Um, he 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 he's outdone Clinton, Bush, Obama, Trump, and I'm sure Biden will, if he's not already, will um, you know, go that way soon. He's outlived Blair, Brown, Cameron, May, Johnson, Truss, Sunak. Well, what's and, interesting, just as a quick thing, yeah. is it's not like the British and American <laughs> leaders, uh, the sorts of people we're expecting a long shelf life for. Yes. Like Putin doesn't look like he's going anywhere for the next decade or so. Yes. These people are looking like they're going to be out this year. Yes. Yes. So there'll be a few, a few more added into that. Um, so um, the, the article also says critics point out that a confident political leader can be dangerous. I'm not sure about that line. Well, I think there's, that's there's do Dr. Dr. David Owen um, has, yeah. the, has this idea of hubris syndrome. And it's very interesting. He, he became foreign secretary when he was quite young. He was mm. 40. In those days, that was young. 
Uh, and uh, the, the idea that if you're in power for a very long time, um, and if you're successful, basically, and the world is telling you you're successful, it's quite a simple thing, really, but it goes to your head. Um, yeah, the world is telling you you're successful, the world is telling you you are, it boosts your confidence. And eventually, if you're in a situation like that, where you have all-encompassing power for a very long time, you'll get more and more yes-men, more and more sycophants, then you become hubristic and you start believing the, 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 the crap that the, the bootlickers are telling you, and then you make a okay. mistake. Okay. Uh, that's okay. with the poll tax. But just narrowly on that point, compare that to Rishi Sunak, who is weak and panicky. He, he came out and gave a weak, panicky podium speech a few about weeks back. George Galloway. Yeah, about George Galloway. Oh, right. Yeah. And, and then you've got Biden, who is weak and panicky as well. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, but that's just I, I, Alzheimer's. Yeah, but I would rather have the hubristic than the weak and panicky. I mean, I don't know. Well, there's, there's better... There's, You've got to take the rough with the smooth of these things, I think. I mean, right. if a person becomes too hubristic, then they can do yes. seriously dangerous things that can seriously endanger the entire country. Mm. Um, or, can, or Mrs. Thatcher, you, you cause riots, you cause all kinds of discord. With yes. Tony Blair, you, you, take, you become hubristic, you, you, you go to war, right. think of all the problems that's caused, still ongoing with the Middle East and so forth. Right. Um, so that's the downside. Okay, on the, on the, uh, and with, with the weak and panicky, at least you don't do that. But it, it, it does mean that there's a sort of uh, scleretic uh, d dimension I see. of politics. But, but also, I think that we actually got a fairly good look into the kind of person Putin was through the Tucker Carlson incident. Yes. And one of the things that I came away thinking was, oh, he seems quite sober and rational. Measured. Yeah. 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 Which, you know, again, not trying to compliment the man, but yes. just saying. Well, Oh, regardless whether you're good sometimes even Putin deserves a comp well, it, yes. I'm not, I'm not, it doesn't have to be a comp it's an accurate assessment his of a, of a of rival history, his knowledge of the history of his own country is I'm sure good. more detailed than that of our Prime Minister without a doubt Apostolic Majesty was not happy with his, with his history oh no but, um, well but, I yes. don't suppose he would be yeah so, but, but he, he, he's a bit finicky on these as, a, as a general broad thing he wasn't bad I think. no 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 he wasn't bad but I do have some advice uh, for, for you Mr Putin uh, if you are watching which basically, what you need to do in order to make your system comply, because I've basically shown that there isn't really any fundamental difference here. It is just a difference of presentation. So what you need to do if you want to make your democracy compliant with Western standards is you need to take two of your body doubles, right? And let's call them... Um, we, so we, <laughs> so, so we, we, can, we can have Rishi Putin and Vladimir Starmer yeah. Right now, what you do is you basically just periodically swap between one or the other of these, and it's okay, right? Because they both have identical policies. Well, this is what he did yes. with—is it Dmitry Mendev or something like that? Oh, he did it. He did it once. He did it once yes. a few years ago. Yeah, yes. and then he decided that's no, too much work. Yeah, he he just. But, but if he just does he this, he tried to do. Yes, it. Yeah. and and it, and and basically, what you do is they have they have identical policies mm. except. They spend all their time trying to score points off each other by calling the other one racist. Literally, the only difference between Rishi Sunak and uh, Keir Starmer is that Rishi Sunak believes zero percent of women have a penis, and Keir Starmer <laughs> believes zero point one percent of women have a penis. <laughs> That's literally the only policy. But they, they've even got the hair, same hairstyle. Yeah, but they? the danger is the nutcases that surround them. So with yeah, someone, well, yeah. someone like Tony Blair, okay, he's just a Machiavellian that doesn't doesn't have any principles and whatever and mm. just wants to get power and is very good at getting power but the problem is that you've got people that are with him uh, that he brings into power really nasty people oh, yeah. like Jack Straw yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 bitter bitter, yeah, yeah. bitter unpleasant yeah, yeah. resentful people yeah. that hate everything beautiful hate everything structured mm. hate everything ordered and want to just bring it down yeah. and that's the problem that's, that's the difference that Starmer has those people behind him mm. uh, and o opens up a possibility yes. for them. But, oh, yeah. Less clear with Sunak. I wasn't trying to imply that either of what, either of these were no threat at all. Yes. We're watching the continual destruction of our country, uh, so it's just going to be more of the same. What I will note is we also have a lot of US viewers, and I thought, why don't we mo knock up a, a, an American version of this same plan to see if you like that. So, mm. basically, same, same sort of idea, but in this one, um, we, we... Pirate. We, well, it's Dan Crenshaw. No, 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 no. This is um, th this is Vladimir Crenshaw. Oh, yes. Oh. And AOP. Um, so, so it's it's a similar notion to what I set out before. Only this time, you have them argue over wokeness and whether zero point zero zero three seven percent of the population can use a particular toilet. Yes. But and this is the important thing: they do agree on stuff like budgets that rack up a trillion in debt every hundred days and um, shipping money abroad. Mm. I'm sorry, excuse my ignorance, but I'm not familiar with this part. It's genuine there's a man with an eye patch that's risen up in American politics. Yes. yes. Uh, he's um, a, version, a new version of John McCain. 
Okay. All right. I see. I see. Just I see. I see. So, 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 yes. so, 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 sort of a, a, a weak Republican. No, and but a weak yeah. Republican until it comes to uh, the American Empire, and he's the most strident Republican. You'll ever... he, he, he's classic Uniparty. Yes, is, is what, I, what, okay. I'm, what I'm trying to get at. So there you go. If if you are listening, Mr. Putin, do this, and uh, the West will start liking you. Maybe suddenly so you'll be back on. Screen. Very, very, very bad at judging debt. Uh, I imagine he is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful. <laughs> Hi, folks. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support us, you can go over to loadseas.com and sign up for £5 a month and go and check out Dan's amazing Brokenomic series. In this particular episode, he's talking about why Bitcoin is back in the bull market. And if you'd like further updates from us, go to Twitter and follow us on loadseaters underscore com. Thanks very much.